Hi there. Welcome to our uh, to our teaching uh, I teach workshop uh, virtual hangout today, um, where we're going to be talking about Google Apps or Google Suite for Education. They recently had a name change, um, so it's now called Google Suite for Education, um, which hopefully will be less confusing because it's a suite of applications and not just um, one or two. So I think that was probably their, their thought behind that. I'm Heidi Olson. I'm the Learning Design Coordinator at UAF eLearning. And with me today, uh, Jennifer Moss will be presenting some ideas. And we have some colleagues, um, Owen Guthrie and Kendall Newman Sadiq, and from eLearning. UAF eLearning, and also um, Claudia Pearson from the Catch Me Bay um, campus um, down in Homer. So we're happy to have her. And we are broadcasting um, live uh, on a, a YouTube Live. Um, and we encourage you to uh, ask questions um, if you're in the Hangout. Um, you can ask questions in the Hangout, um, or on the YouTube side, um, you can also ask questions there, and we'll try to monitor those. Um, for the folks inside the Hangout, I'm going to share um, a URL for a for our um, um, resources today, and uh, for you on the live stream. Um, here's a little slide with our resources. Um, if you click on the short UL, URL there, that'll take you to um, ITU, where um, we have some of our resources and a link to this recording if you want to come back to it at another, another time. So um, let's just get right into it. Um, I was going to show um, something that new is kind of new in um, in at Google Docs slides and sheets, and it's called action items. And it uses um, sort of natural language processing to create uh, to help you create reminders about things where you might want to. Um, have people follow up on. So um, in this example, um, I have uh, I have typed in Heidi to schedule weekly check-ins, and when I did that, it automatically created this little uh, assignment task uh, message um, on the side, and um, I can if when I and it automatically did that. So that also created an email message to my email um, and also um, so that I could follow up on it and have a reminder. Um, so there's two, um, two reminders here that automatically were created and here's the little messages that popped up. Um, and, and it just used the regular, um, uh, you know, just regular text speech to figure that out. So, um, we could say uh, to do um, Heidi to um, send follow up, um, and it it does take a moment, but um, it should create a second little bar here, um, which it did, and um, I can assign it or I can dismiss it. So I'm going to assign it. Um, and what will happen is it will create an email that goes right out to me, um, which is really handy. Um, and then when I'm done, you know, I can click it off and then it goes away. Um, and what, what is also interesting is um, in Google Drive, for that document, it tells me that I have three things to follow up on. So it's giving me that other second, that second visual cue about things that I might need to do. Um, so I think that could be really handy, especially maybe not with students, but um, when you're working on a group project, I guess that would be really helpful for students to know what they need to follow up on. Um, the anyone who is in the document or the 
you have to be inside and shared the document in order for this to happen. Um, a second thing that happens then is it highlights that action item, so it's a visual cue. Um, so I can see a lot of potential for that, especially um, for group projects or anything that's um, sort of collaborative. Um, any questions about that? Seems pretty straightforward. Um, Jen, what do you uh, what do you got? Um, well, I was going to show actually some uh, new things like um, API integrations and maybe a little bit later Google Sites. Um, I could start with um, talking a little bit about some of the new API integrations, specifically with Google Slides, and this is a fairly new um, component there seems like they're trying to um, help slides be integrated with um, some of the third-party options that are available out there and I can show a few of those hang on okay so uh, if if you're a Zapier user for example you can now um, have a closer integration with slides um, and through Zapier. And Zapier is a um, kind of helps to autom automate workflows. And it's similar to if this, then that. Um, but you're cre instead of recipes, you're creating zaps. Um, and so the one that I thought might be kind of helpful that I kind of looked at was um, potentially uh, refreshing Google Slides and charts with new responses from the Google Forms. So if you have embedded um, a chart, it will automatically update now instead of just being a flat image. Um, so that could potentially be something. But there's a whole bunch of them there um, that seem like you know they ha might have a potential use. Uh, so that's kind of exciting. Um, Another integration, API integration, uh, is with Trello. And Trello is a, um, it's a project kind of collaborative tool where you can um, work with others to have conversation about uh, all kinds of different things that you find or that you're um, wanting to discuss. I picture it being used in education with potentially uh, student groups collaborating on a project and then um, where the slides come in is and that integration is um, when the students need to go and then present what they've been um, finding so what we're looking at right now is um, on the screen is a fake group presentation that I kind of put together with something I'm interested in. Um, but uh, you can see that, uh, I think it was this one, Sci Art Collaboration uh, is one that, no, it's not that one. One of them, um, here, this one here, is something that, uh, has more activity you can add members you can collaborate and it's not a great example but um, you can have a lot of discussion on um, a particular topic of interest and these topics that you put in are called um, lists up here uh, and then you can just add these cards along with it and discussion around particular cards anyway it's it's kind of a cool environment and then on the right hand side in this menu, you can um, uh, integrate with a bunch of different services here. And one of them that's brand new is uh, Google Drive. So once you enable that, which I've already done here, um, there's a button uh, that appears on your Trello wall and you can click on create slide presentation which takes a second, and then it will put all of these lists and cards into a presentation format that then you can um, 
edit and um, customize from there. So, are you guys seeing that? Yes. Uh, so the only drawback um, is that it creates kind of a snapshot. So it doesn't automatically update when you make changes in the Trello. So it's something that you would have them do um, at the very end. And it's kind of, obviously, it's not like super, super um, fancy or anything. You might want to uh, mess with it quite a bit before it's in a final, final format, but a way for, a way for students to collaborate and then present on that collaboration uh, in a really easy, easy way. Um, another one that I have been playing with is uh, through Lucidchart, which um, lets you do collaborative mind maps and um, charting and um, that sort of thing. And I wasn't as impressed with this one um, because uh, what it does is kind of just takes a snapshot and it's not interactive like the Trello. Um, you can update the chart and I'll show you what I mean. So um, to create a new slide, you uh, click on the little slide gizmo and anything that's highlighted in this area will become one slide as part of your presentation. Um, I'm just gonna do two so you can see. Um, actually, you can also um, click on highlight and only select the particular bubbles that you want, and that can be a, a slide. Uh, oops. Somehow I've got the color. Okay. So now if I send all of these to Google Slides, um, it will um, it will create a new page for each of those sections. It takes a minute. But what it does, it's, it just kind of makes this um, screenshot. So I'm not sure um, why you would want to do that exactly, because you could just take a screenshot and copy and paste it in. So this thing that it creates for each page um, is just, just kind of a, a flat file. So those are three API integrations that I've played with recently for um, Google Slides in particular that I thought were interesting. That's, I, that's really cool. I, I could see where you know, if you were having students use them, you, you might want to just tell them to try something out first to see how it works on the slide end. Um, mm -hmm. Just to, you know, just to get an idea of some organization and stuff. But that's really cool. I like that. Yeah, definitely. And I think the most useful one, um, well, Zapier, if you're a Zapier user, um, is, is, would be really handy. But, um, uh, I tend to prefer using if this then that just because that's what I started out using and um, it seems more straightforward to me but the Trello I could see using with students um, particularly maybe like in a graduate level um, where you know they might be a little more tech savvy and um, a little bit more have a little bit more investment in being involved in the group projects and then making those presentations I think it could be pretty useful yeah I also saw that um, that there were other API integrations and Salesforce was one of them so mm -hmm. um, you know many more people are using Salesforce for sort of data management so that that might be interesting to see how that works to create um, yeah issues too yeah, if you're using Salesforce, there's a new, the new uh, API with slides is called Conga. 
or Conga is one that has a, a new API, and I don't know. I've never used Conga, and I'm not a big Salesforce user, so I didn't really look at that one um, very closely, but um, for a Salesforce user, that might be of interest. Yeah, it makes me want to put on a party hat. <laughs> Okay, um, how about Google Forms? What do we got for Google Forms? Let me see. Um, a couple new things have come out, um, which are really fun. Um, predictive question types. <clears throat> so um, kind of along the lines of the natural um, process language, um, Google Forms, when you enter certain types of um, question an or answer types, like days of the week, different sizes, months of the year. It, um, it looks at the, what you've entered and it will give you some automatic answers so you don't have to enter them in all um, by, you know, on your own. So um, here's an example where select a shirt size and then it automatically um, <clears throat> suggest these different shirt sizes um, and then you can select all or you can just select the ones that you would like um, here is one for days of the week uh, what month is your favorite um, I I don't exactly know what the options are um, I tried uh, a few things like um, pick a time between uh, 9 a.m. and noon to see if it would you know give me some hours of the day um, and it didn't like that and um, I think I chose um, which city in Alaska is your favorite and it didn't like that it didn't help me with that um, so you know it's limited to a few things but uh, I thought that was um, a nice feature and another one is uh, you can add a file upload question now so um, this, I think this is going to be really helpful um, when you want your students to show you an image of something. Or um, uh, I remember um, uh, at a high school they were trying to collect information for a yearbook, and they wanted you know name, grade, hobbies, and then they wanted students to upload their picture, um, but they couldn't do it before. But now um, you can do uh, file uploads. So I'm just going to create a new question here, and uh, it's called File Upload. Um, and uh, one thing about this, one restriction, is that the form is only limited to those who are in your domain, um, which is kind of a bummer for the open access. But the reason for that is that the form, the image gets stored stored in your Google Drive folder. So it has to it has to know what that connection is. Um, so that that is kind of one downfall. Um, but uh, um, it's, it's pre Thanksgiving. We'll do a um, Thanksgiving question. Um, so I can do number of files uh, one five or ten. Um, min uh, maximum file size because um, we don't want to completely uh, bombard um, a drive or uh, or a, or a, um, your internet service with huge files and I believe that uh, file size is on a per image basis so um, it's not cumulative it would be each file um, and then you can also, you also have different file types that are allowed. So if you're looking for audio or video or drawing, presentation, um, any of these um, file types would be applicable. Um, so I'm just going to say uh, all of them. Uh, and then when you look at it, so uh, what are you having for Thanksgiving? I'm going to add a file. And I happen to have a file. Uh, uh, add a file. File here. Uh, 
so I'm going to have beer. <laughs> um, and if you look at that on the back end, um, this is the spreadsheet that goes along with that form. And um, you have a link to your drive where that file is located. Um, and, uh, and what I found out was that um, it will live in the folder um, of which your form is living. So I created a file for Google um, Tips and Tricks event for today. And then um, I put the form in that folder. So then the file that I uploaded will also be in that folder. So um, one thing you might want to do if you're going to use that with students is kind of talk about a naming convention with your students. Um, just so that there is some connection in your drive. Um, although you can always go to the spreadsheet if you get confused or want to have access to the file. Um, so um, I think that could be really useful. Um, I'm really, I'm kind of excited about that, um, to have that direct access in the form to different file types. Uh, I wish it could go across domains, um, but um, it's it, you can't. So maybe that's something that they can be working on. I'm I'm thinking that it's really this is really tied to classroom, which you have to be in the same domain um, to be in a, a, the same classroom. So I'm thinking that that's kind of what they're thinking as far as integration. Uh, yeah, any thoughts or questions? Or? Uh, this is all. I'm, I'm just going to come out, turn my camera on. I'm sitting here uh, this afternoon in the sun, so I didn't want to overexpose <laughs> anyone. <laughs> um, yes. We ran up against this problem working with uh, K-12 projects here in the local schools. We wanted students to, to submit the final projects as group members via a Google form, and of course they couldn't. This was a year ago or a year and a half ago. And uh, it's great that that integration is there now. And I can see, I was thinking about ways around it. And I was also thinking about ways you could maybe share the folder on another website so people are submitting things and still able to see other people's submissions. I don't know. I think it just it's beginning to open up a lot of potential cool things. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Guys, yeah can, you, can you embed a folder, uh, the contents of a folder? I can't, I don't think you can. I was trying to think if you can do that. You can't. Uh, yeah. I don't think so, but you could, um, but you could make a folder open to anybody. Right. So that's right. So you could ha have so. people submit and just share the, share the link to the folder. That'd be an easy way to do it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so you could do that with parents. And I was thinking even for the, potentially you could create a submission account that's fairly open that people could use to submit stuff. You know, if you if you absolutely had to have someone outside your domain submitting things, you could just create a login for them, uh, an alias account that was restricted in some way or whatever. Right. For, for that was a good point. And then on your form, you could have an extra place for name. Yep. That yep. they could fill out so you would know who it was attached to. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of ways yeah. around things like that, but <laughs> just the ability that you could. I was really frustrated at the time that you couldn't submit a file. It seems like such a basic form thing. So it's great. It's mm -hmm. finally there. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Uh, Jen, do you want to oh. share something else? Um, sure. I was going to talk about the new Google Sites a little bit. Um, we have been playing with it within the UA domain um, over the last week or two, and um, it's been interesting. And then suddenly today, of course, the day we're doing this activity, uh, it's it, it kind of the link disappeared to go to the new Google Sites. Um, so I'm going to have to show it on a regular commercial Google um, site. But it, uh, yeah, of course, it is uh, coming, I assume. I have a question mark on that um, off to the help desk. But it's, um, it's kind of cool. Um, and I'm thinking that perhaps one of the reasons why uh, it disappeared um, was that uh, there's not really a mechanism in place yet for sites for transitioning 
from the old site, your old site to the new site structure. Um, and that's not going to be in place, um, Google says, until 20, sometime in 2017. Um, and then in 2018, the old sites are going to be completely depreciated, so everyone's going to have to switch over. Um, and sites as kind of as it is, the new sites is kind of limited in terms of functionality. But I think that is um, probably going to be changing, and it'll be morphing, which is exciting because uh, it's turning into a, a much better interface, I think. So let me get that open, and we can take a little tool through it. Um, so this is this is what you get to when you um, open up sites before you've opened up the the new sites. This is the old site, and so I'm going to click on new Google Sites, and again, this is in a personal account that I have, not the UA. So what I've done is I've already created this kind of basic start to a site by clicking on the create new site down here in the lower right hand corner. And it walks you through that process just like the old sites do. So I'm not gonna go through that again because it's pretty self-explanatory. You just choose a title and you get this pretty nice looking interface um, that's uh, very, very intuitive. It's It reminds me of um, things like Squarespace and Weebly and all of the new web interfaces that uh, are really popular right now. You just mouse over a section to, um, to, to edit it, to um, write in it, and it automatically kind of saves that. You don't have to click on save. You do have to click on publish when you're ready to um, finalize your changes, but you don't have to do that until the very, very end. Um, it's a, uh, if you want to create the, it's kind of broken into these sections. So if you want to create a new section, you just go over here, text box. And I just clicked on that once and it popped up a little text box and I can put in, um, some text. I can change that text to um, a heading or a subheading. It kind of gives me some options here. It can be a link. Um, I can change the background a little bit. It's um, this background color is limited to the theme that you use. So it kind of comes up with a, a default theme. And I actually already changed the image on the background of the main header here. Um, but if you uh, choose, you can choose a different header. I've, I've lost the original one. It's just super easy. You can upload your own. Um, oh, here we go, reset. So this is what you get when you first set up a site. Um, you can change the theme. There's very simplistic themes that you can use that they have ready for you. You can't upload a custom theme yet, but I'm sure that's in the works. You can change the, see it kind of changes all of the header. Um, you don't have a whole lot of control over that at this point. Pages are really easy to add. Um, of course, there's not really any customization of where those um, where those menus happen, but you can uh, add a new page. Uh, let's see. I was going to add AR apps. Um, no, AR browsers was the one I was going to add. And it's super easy just to add that page. It's fast. Um, you can change the header type if you want it to be um, a little bit different. This is the large banner, banner, or title only. And then from here, you just start inserting things. Um, you can embed a URL. Um, and uh, which could be like ar.com. Oops, that's. And if the website has information, it will kind of, like meta information, it will automatically um, put in some in information there. Uh, another one, asthma.com. 
this one interestingly uh, only shows the link because the original website didn't provide any meta to go along with it. So that's what that looks like. So you'd have to make it fancier yourself if you wanted to keep it consistent. Um, let's go to um, this page, which I started. This is a link here. Um, again, you can insert URLs. Oops. If there's, um, let's see, let, to get rid of it, you just click on the um, trash can there. Let me try that again. Yeah, I guess this one doesn't have any information either. But if I wanted to drag that to um, maybe fit up here, you can just easily drag things around. Still playing with this. Sometimes you can drag them side by side. This one might be too wide. So as you start to resize the objects, you'll see that there's a nice and handy grid to help you um, keep things. Uh, there we go. Keep things in. Um, the grid space that you want them to be in in a nice um, in a nice layout. So it's helping you with that layout, which I think is really awesome. Let's see. You can also um, embed things from. Oh, this is uh, this is me. I embedded a map. Um, I invited myself to uh, be an editor on this page. And so you can add, just like sharing out the old Google Sites, you can invite more people. I can invite um, uh, Heidi. For example, to come and be a co-editor. Um, so she could put something in, uh, in the site. She actually has. Um, as a co-editor right now, you can't, I don't think you can lock down page by page like you can in the old sites. So it gives editing privileges across the whole site. Um, but you can insert all kinds of things like um, you can insert slides, maps. So let's just do that. And it's taking a minute to think about it. Come on. You can drag and drop, or you can just click on it. You should be able to click on it. Insert. Okay. Well, let's have a look and see if it's actually updating or not. You can um, preview up at the top, and it'll pop you out into a preview page. For some reason, it's not liking that slide, so I might need to go and double check my permissions on that. Um, you can see what it looks like on the tablet and on a mobile device, and then to exit. Just click on the X. It's really, really intuitive. You can upload files you, and images. Um, you can insert calendars, um, docs, sheets, forms, charts, all those things. So it's pretty awesome. When you go to publish, or let's see what's in here, um, site analytics you can set up. Also, um, it will let you choose your location and then publish. It doesn't yet map custom URLs other than um, 
at the site's domain yet. But this is what it looks like. It's just super easy to use. Um, super limited, but super easy. So I, before, oh, before I meant to, it wasn't quick enough on the microphone. I added a text stock uh, oh. entry on the presentations page. Cool. Okay. So. Yeah, and, that's showing up right below, um, right below the map. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and uh, Kendall asked questions about permissions to public. So, um, the the options are either public or within your domain. Um, you can't just lock it down to certain people. Um, yeah, I don't think you can yet. I'm. Wondering if that's something that's going to be fleshed out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, the, um, sorry, my question was because you were saying that the um, slides that you were having trouble inserting, you maybe needed to check permission. So maybe that's what you're responding to. So my question was would those slides permissions have to be set to public to show oh. up? Yes, they would because I'm outside the. Well, I'm outside the domain, so yes, yeah. that's probably what's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, it was working earlier, but I don't know. I was on a different machine, <laughs> so. Well, uh, one thing that's really nice is that uh, all the responsiveness um, is built in, so um, you don't have to worry about how it might be seen on a iPhone or an iPad. That's all built in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's so easy and intuitive to use for, uh, you know, it's going to be a really great thing for students making portfolios and for basic course websites where you're just putting content, course content mm -hmm. out um, for instructors who are uh, not super tech savvy but want a nice presentation as part of their course experience. I mean, it's, it's going to be really, really great. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think as soon as they um, add some sort of collaboration piece to it, so right now you can't comment like on the bottom of a page and you, there's no announcement. Um, so as soon as they add that, that's going to be cool. And there is also no revision history, so it doesn't act like a wiki anymore. Right, um, right. Yeah, it'll so. be interesting to see what new features. They haven't really specified what features they're going to bring back. Maybe there will mm -hmm. be a blog functionality potentially. Mm -hmm. um, that would be that would be interesting. Of course, if they did that, then they would probably have to have different levels of um, authoring ability, uh, mm -hmm. so that you could have authors and editors and administrators. You know, similar to WordPress or something, but. Mm -hmm. Um, hopefully it'll become a little bit more uh, complex that way so it's a little more useful and wider variety of things but yeah I'm pretty excited in general yeah. as, a, as a good start anyway <laughs> a good start yeah nice refresh on it mm -hmm. uh, let's see um, got a few other things here um, one thing I have found really helpful is um, the ability to add calendar reminders for myself. Um, I, uh, you know, have sheets of to-do things, um, and there's things in the future that I want to be reminded that I need to do. Um, and creating a calendar reminder has been really helpful, um, so I can just set. Uh, set a little reminder in the calendar banner um, and with a with a description and it can be something that's recurring so um, you know once a week I check a certain website and as a reminder I just create a little notice to myself and then um, when I get to that day I see that I need to do something and I can check it off if I don't check it off it um, automatically uh, reverts or automatically advances to the next day so um, I can never get rid of it until 
I uh, check it off. Um, so it's it, the it, the action, the process of creating that is much like you would an event where you just um, you know create. Uh, you just select your time and date, and instead of selecting event, you click on reminder, um, and it um, it it shows it looks like this, um, and you can mark it off either um, by clicking on it and getting more details, or just within the little list, um, you can mark it off. And I find that really helpful. And probably the best feature is that if I don't click it off, it advances to the next day. So I always have that list, um, and I don't have to rewrite it. Um, it's rewritten for me. Um, one thing. You I, I you can't do is you can't reorder things so if there's a certain priority you can't um, reorder them you'd have to delete them and add them back in um, but hopefully the list doesn't get too long um, so it, it it gets pretty short and if you check it off it doesn't um, actually completely go away it still shows up on that date but it has a strike through um, strike through on it and so if you do need to refer back to a task and when you did it you still have it there it just shows that it was done so uh, excuse me that's um, really helpful excuse me um, Another thing that is new in, in um, Google Docs is you, um, they have changed or give you giving you a section option, second option for how a table of contents looks. So in the past, um, you only had one option, and it is um, was just based on your headers. Um, and um, let's see, where is it? Uh, um, Oh, um, it, it looked like this, where you just had all of your headers show up with the action link tied to it. Um, but now you can um, change the format of that. And you can add page numbers. Um, so as an as an alternative, uh, you can have it set like this. Unfortunately, wouldn't it be great if you could tie them both together and have both hot links and page numbers? Um, but from what I can find, it's either one or the other. Um, oh, actually, never mind. I was wrong. I was wrong, these are hot links, they're just not blue. <laughs> so it fooled me. So um, that that can be really helpful. So let's see, where was I? I'll just use that to get down here. Um, the other uh, thing now you can do in Google Docs is create column layouts. So finally, um, you can do a little bit more um, formatting within a, within a document um, as opposed to just having one column, um, you can uh, choose multi multi columns um, to give your document a little nicer layout, um, which could be really helpful for things like if you wanted to do a sort of a more magazine style um, uh, syllabus. Um, you can do custom, and you can also put the little line in the gutter there. So to help the readability. So um, that's new. Um, and you know, you could come, like I say, you could do a more sort of magazine style um, layout where you would have some pictures um, and uh, text along the side um, for your formatting. So that is very handy, I think. Um, so also with the API integration that Jen talked about, um, a lot of people are now using Slack as a communication tool. I know UAF eLearning is using that for the design team um, instead of chat or email. We're using Slack as a way of organizing different topics um, and sharing that um, amongst ourselves. 
and it has a lot of really nice integration so you can pull in your social media so it's all in one spot um, and now um, you can also integrate that with Google with Google so um, I on the on the text bar um, where you have the little plus sign um, you can now import a file from Google Drive directly or you can actually create either a spreadsheet a document or a slideshow so if for some reason you were in slack and you uh, wanted to create a new document um, you could do it right from within slack without having to go back out to um, Google and then share the link with everybody so that that could be really helpful as far as a uh, uh, time management um, thing goes um, one other thing um, is that template gallery is going to also be seeing some changes so the old template gallery um, was sort of all of the different um, applications all combined and um, you could you could find different templates um, based on the purpose um, within the domain you could have certain templates that you could share um, this is going away sometime in 20 um, 2017 and now they want you to go to the the application home page um, where you um, oh they changed it Oh, good. <laughs> um, yesterday, you were not able to upload your own template, but it looks like they, I sent an email to the help, the help desk, and they actually responded, which is super cool. Um, so now it looks like we can create our own templates within our domain, and we could submit our own templates uh, for use uh, throughout the domain. So that is exciting. Thank you, OIT. <laughs> um, so that, that was working yesterday for Sheets, but not for um, Google Docs or Spreadsheets. So, um, so yeah, so that, that could be helpful, and um, it could be a way of uh, making sure people are all on the same page and version control of documents isn't getting too hysterically out of whack. Um, and then um, just wanted to point out that there are kind of three different places where I look for um, up getting updates on Google and the links are here and we'll share them in the resource um, one of them is a release calendar so you can see kind of when things are coming out um, but keeping in mind that each domain master at administrator has sort of control on when they roll things out officially so there might be some delay um, but there's also the uh, G Suite Learning Center for um, support and tutorials. And one thing about Google is that I think they're really, really good about providing support material. Um, and then uh, G Suite updates, um, as things roll out, they, they give some more details. Um, and then they usually do a monthly calendar um, on what has come out the previous month. So those are all um, really useful places that I go to get information about what's new. So, um, Jennifer, did you have any? I don't. Else? Have, I don't have anything else. But I did forget to mention one thing that um, I think is pretty cool, and that is that Google Slides now will allow you to download um, Open Office um, files, the uh, OD, ODB files, ODP files, uh, which is the Open Office suite. Um, so you can now download your presentation in that format, which is great. Yeah, yeah that's great. They're opening mm -hmm. things up mm -hmm. to a lot more uh, file formats. Cool. Great. Yeah. Good. Um, any questions or thoughts from the, the local group here? So thanks. That was fun. It was nice to get a kind of condensed, distilled tour of some new stuff and some new connections and new ways to use things. It was very, yeah. very well done. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Um, this is, um, you know, a series of uh, workshops that we put on and we do. Um, 
If you're interested in the whole schedule, uh, please go to iteachu.uaf.edu/events um, and to see everything that we're doing. We usually do um, at least one, if not three, uh, events a week. Uh, immediately following this session is a, our open virtual lab, and um, the the URL for that is um, at that event site. So if you have any questions or want to join us for that. We do that every Wednesday at 1. Uh, we have open labs for face-to-face -face faculty on Tuesdays and Fridays, so please join us for that. Um, there's our Jennifer and my contact information number, and um, you know, please feel free to contact us if you have any questions or want to talk about something or want to try something out. We love trying things out um, and exploring. That's usually the highlight of our day. Um, so please, everyone, uh, have a really nice Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and we have a lot to be thankful for. And um, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Heidi. Thanks.